kennels. You cannot put five of them together because four of them will get distempered from the fifth. So you will have a pandemic. There's no point wasting time sterilizing them because they're going to die of distemper anyway. You do not have the money. Registered NGOs who are trained, go and get trained at WVS, which is in Uti. It's not just the vets that have to get trained. Send the catchers. If you use nets, because if you catch a dog and hurt it in the process, that is so much more expensive for you because then you have to wait till the leg heals or the neck heals, right? So go and get trained at WYS. They do it free. So you go there, we, you know, and even if you get four NGOs to get trained at one time, that's enough. Start with that. You can then pass on the, the training. Four vets, two catchers per vet, one per vet is enough. And then come back and start it. Do not do ABC on your own. Do not. You don't have the money for it. Otherwise, did it not occur to you that you simply could have taken two rooms, rented two rooms, given two rooms of a house, and then kept those animals for three days? If you are not going to do a blood test, for God's sake, keep them and feed them well for three days, not just with long-acting antibiotics, but over three days, there are many other things. They're painkillers. Whether I have a long-acting antibiotic or not, I had my ovaries taken out when I was 30. And I screamed and screamed for days after that. There, I'm no different from a dog. So you need painkillers. You need good food. You need that animal to feel safe. If it's back on the street in three hours, is it going to feel safe? It's going to, it's cold, it's raining, it's always something wrong with the weather, always. So where is it going to find? And they're just putting bells on it and sending it along to tingle tongle on the way. For what reason? Yeah, we set out to do good and then we do really bad. Are there any questions on this? I just have a comment, they're trying to get the WVS training in Nepal. Yeah, get that's, it. Get that's it. in process, so I don't know how. Great. Um, no, so let the cat people sponsor it. Yes. I'm trying to get them. Uh, where did I ask them for? For the whole of Chhattisgarh. Because, you know, a lot of fake, fake NGOs have moved in into this field. Mini Vasudevan, who's one of our best shelters and has won a national award recently, does it in Coimbatore. And she will tell you that fakes move. I made an SPCA center for them, an ABC center for them many years ago. And it's constantly been occupied by cheap, rubbish NGOs who come underbid her for the government tender, take it, make a mess, kill as many dogs as they can, then they're thrown out, then they offer it to her. But after so much damage has been done, so much damage, we had one vet in Velour who did 2,000 dogs using normal needle and thread, and then let them go. We've had intestines fall out on the street. I mean, even in Delhi, we have that. We have seven. This, uh, this sector is riddled with fakes, fake NGOs, only because of the money, which is given by the government. So when the government agrees in Nepal to give you money, make foolproof, um, something foolproof to protect against SOP. Ha, a foolproof SOP. And one of it, the starting point should be training by WVS. Any NGO that's not trained cannot get money, cannot bid, cannot be in the system. Then the ABC centers uh, have to be designed. If you want, we'll send you a design. Gauri has got the best design. Lucknow has the best design. Some of our ABC centers in India are truly appalling. It's one room, you put 30 dogs in it. All 30 die after they've been sterilized. Because they're on the road with distemper. No puppies, no pregnant dogs. The better ABC centers even have blood tests now. And we find that the dog you've picked up has got tick fever. He looks apparently normal and healthy. But he's got tick fever. It's called E. Canis. E -canis. E -canis. Yeah. E but it's not detectable until the blood starts coming out of the nose. So uh, you'll need to get there sooner or later. If you want to earn money, 
the best way would be for an NGO to start a lab laboratory of its own. It costs about 10 lakhs. And then you can use that to do people's pet dogs. And use it free. That's what we do in my shelter. It's free for our shelter animals. And then that company we use to pay for all the people who come for OPD, who have own dogs. Hmm? Um, is, does anybody want to, Dori, do you want to resume? <coughs> You ask the questions, that's how it will keep going. <coughs> yeah. Okay, thank you for uh, your, uh, these deliberations you have given here. So that is so much <coughs> uh, knowledge to us. And here, uh, we also, I'm just as an individual, and my wife runs high school. So we, uh, we saw this problem of the dogs in all, and uh, it was very pathetic. So. We arranged uh, this camping for Spain. In that, uh, we were not uh, that much knowledge. So you killed them all? Yeah, even, even, no, we didn't kill. But then again, we kept it for two, two nights. No? We, we gave uh, four or five meals. Uh, but the government and other people should just, they will do one day and they will throw. No? And we hired a partner with this SPCA and they brought good medical persons. And that video is 20 minutes uh, long video is there. In that, like a trainer, everything in cutout, I have written also steps, like you are telling, you know, do this and that and that. Everything is there, but people are highly knowledgeable by themselves. Just by looking at the uh, thumbnail, already they have known that what they can, they have to do, you know. So nobody will follow such things. La just uh, one... Uh, no, but one don't, moment. it's not... Hang on a bit. This a program is not a citizen's program. That, that the, a community is has to support it by feeding animals, by identifying animals, so that when you return a dog, you <coughs> return it into the loving arms of somebody who knows the dog. Right? It could be a shopkeeper, it could be a student, it could be anybody. That's the only community involvement. The rest of it is a purely professional job to be done by professionals. If you make a video, do you make a video of taking out my ovaries? No, not that not, not that the medical part, uh, everything, but uh, overall process, the management process, how you do, like uh, how we go. But they're not going to die because of the management process, they die because of the operation. Yeah, uh, the, then again, uh, about <coughs> this post, uh, post phase here, I had a discussion with this cat, cat person also. Because I, I told that I, I, I was holding it uh, for two more days. Uh, to feed and all, and if someone, some uh, cat, uh, dog is very weak or like that, I will again call the vet uh, or take consultations uh, like that. And some dog we 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 kept in a house afterwards also because his condition was not that much good. But they are t telling that uh, we have a community guideline book written and book we are distributing something like pamphlet. So that's the, they will take care of it. But I can uh, tell you that uh, last time they did in this Chisapani, they did Star Kessor and all. E every time they, uh, they have uh, operated this uh, spit, the whole bunch of this, uh, 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 all, the, all the dogs within the vehicles, uh, it is guided. Because one woman was telling, I don't know what they are doing, and some vitamin they forgot to give. That's why all the dogs afterwards, they have died, no? They have died because their wounds have become septic from inside. Do you want to say anything? Both the same, same day they are discharging, you know. And like the same day is a killer, they're going to die. And, and like you are saying, uh, they will give this uh, food and all. No, no, better to just our, inject the dog with whatever and kill it. That community is not giving uh, in most cases. So the concept the called the CNPR, CNPR, which is catch, neuter, vaccinate, release the same day, is a giving. failed concept. It should not be done anywhere because that has proven to be completely unscientific and it's a sure way of killing the dog in a very slow and torturous manner while feeling ourselves that we've done a great okay, job. There's also that a belief that if you do keyhole surgery, the dog will heal faster. I had keyhole surgery and it all went bad. A keyhole surgery requires an extremely skilled surgeon. We do not have any skilled surgeons in India or Nepal. The people doing the operations are BVSCs. 
a BVSC can do it in the open way, which means you really have to keep the dog for a minimum of three to five days, depending on its health and how quickly the stitches heal. If you do, if you try keyhole surgery, so that we can't see it, therefore there's only a tiny hole and goes out, it will die for sure. It's a hundred percent death. It will have internal bleeding and all kinds of things. The, uh, the doctor, but uh, he debated. No, I, I told him I, I had taken also one street dog. It was very tiny. No, no, so no I, up, I, I told him don't don't give it a midline. Midline. No, it is. I don't. Uh, <coughs> feel is very good. You can do sideways. No, but he he told that if you want to get it done here, you can leave it. Uh, if you, if you are not confident, he's telling me if you are not confident, you can take the. Uh, okay. Dog now the minimum age for a pup to get sterilized is six months. It should not be sterilized before six months, whether it's male or female, ever, because before six months if you're doing it, it's you're basically preparing it for death. So don't do that. And midline or flank, both are uh, you know approved methods. They are both safe, provided the vet knows what he's doing. It's important that when the uterus is being pulled out, both ovaries also come out. Because if both ovaries don't come out and some ovarian tissue is left behind, then the female will keep coming on heat. Well, and then she'll keep But they don't remove the uterus, out. they just remove the ovaries. No, both uterus and both ovaries are removed. No. They have one, one more typical problem, no? Because as in our communities, there are not uh, no feeders. They have just had, no? Or they neglect and um, not having uh, this, uh, some food, they die, means they are very happy, no? If the catus comes and for operation, no? They, they fight. Why you uh, brought uh, the dogs again back, no? In previous years, seven years back. That's right. You so do, what you need they, to do is... Now that requires a different form of education. We have the same problem in India. But I have one, one little part of question, no, that I was uh, trying to join in this. What the, I had the honor of the discussion with them. Why you are doing male dogs? Male dogs. But I know why they are doing male dogs. Because there is no feeders, so no one is there to guess who is in corn or no, that uh, li, uh, female one. No, no, and you do all, the male dogs also. You do the male dogs also. The point is, if you don't do the male dogs, when a female who is unsterilized, two kilometers away, goes on heat, those male dogs will run off and fight to, to uh, have sex with her. And then they will bite as many people as they can two kilometers away. So it's better to do the males as well. And don't but, but here, yeah. here, here problem, Absolutely problem is there. If you in the community there is 300 dogs, they are in, in three years also, they are not able to catch the 30 female dogs, no? No, no, I'm saying catch whatever you can. Male pakda to pakdo, female pakda to pakdo, just finish it. How to, how to, how to bring it in a zero status, no? It, listen to me. When we were getting rid of polio in India, yes. the government of India put 700 crore rupees a month for polio eradication. And even then, it took them 10 years. Right. All right? Nepal government puts zero money. Indian government puts one crore or less. So where are you going to bring it down to zero? Never. So if there is a, a belief, I mean, we are in court now and we are trying to get it declared as an anti-rabies program, not as a dog sterilization program. Yes. Now the, rabies, the health ministry will oppose it because they have a completely mad definition which says we are not a dog sterilization ministry. We are a Disease health ministry. So my response to that is you are not a mosquito killing ministry. You are a malaria ministry. But for that you have to kill the mosquitoes. Right? So the same way to get to zero rabies, you have to have dog sterilized dogs or vaccinated. So if we can get that done, now yours is a new republic. It's easier for you. Your ministers are more accessible. They have less ego. When the new government takes place, it will be coalition. And again, it will be more accessible. Why not talk to them and make them understand? Talk In the meantime, talk to the WHO representative here and ask him if he can organize funds for an anti-rabies program. Forget about talking. We, we don't talk about dog sterilization. Talk about anti-rabies. If you can put a couple of crores into that program, from uh, uh, an international source, you will be able to pick up money from dogs, um, 
dog or whatever but, uh, it's called. Excuse me, ma'am. The hell is already in such arrangement. They, they have, uh, it's not good to take name of organization. But Manu Mitra is there and they, the colors of budget also uh, okay. uh, no problem uh, from the uh, municipality. But what happens, like you just told, no? The standarding. The standarding game goes on, goes on, goes on. If 9 lakh rupees uh, they have to buy medicines, the five results gets lost and three. No, no, I, I don't want to hear moaning and like, groaning. Like I don't want to hear no. moaning and groaning. I want to hear what will be done in future. You, I don't want to hear the past. In the past, you actually have made the same mistakes we made in the beginning. We are now long past that and arriving at a situation where we cannot afford to do this anymore. Our tendering is completely rubbish. So therefore, you will have to post elections, go in for a new system where there is no tendering, there is a fixed amount. That fixed amount will be increased as per inflation. Let us start at 1400 rupees per dog. After 1400 <coughs> rupees, then the next time round, it will be 1600 after a little while, depending on how inflation works. In that 1400, they will tell you which medicines to buy, which sutures to buy, you will tell them and they will make it part of that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this practice in smaller this, uh, municipalities, SPCA carried out, no? There the standarding and such thing is not there. Thus, piece by how much they will pay, uh, pay you know? And some negotiation paper they do and 200 dogs like that there. That is, that work is fine. But the main is th 33 watts and this whole, whole this metro. Okay, what you need government. to do is basically then work with the government and ensure that the technical uh, qualifications of the tender are high. And the, the uh, standards that are expected by the corporation <coughs> remain high. The corporation should not come out to the tender saying, oh, you do 500 dogs and we don't care how you do it. Because then anybody would come and do any kind of nonsense and go away and all those 500 dogs would be dead. So the, uh, the technical qualifications of the organization, the veterinarian, what the we training, need is everything. The SOP be. that is on the Animal Welfare Board right now in India, please take that entire SOP and copy, uh, it. And, copy it and give it to the government here. And Lucknow is not too far, Dehradun is not too far. If you want to go and visit those places, they would be very happy to show you the animal birth control centers, how the operation theater is run, how the, you can make a smaller one uh, in smaller districts, in uh, much smaller places can be made, but it has to be made like a hospital. It has to have asepsis. It has to have a little bit of scientific thinking. You can't, and even if in places where, like I heard somebody saying, oh, we don't have post-operative care. Fine, then find a foster, uh, chain of fosters who can probably get a operation, uh, uh, you know, table of a private vet in a clinic, get the dog operated, have put it in a foster facility for two, three days and then put it back on the road. But somebody will have to strategize it. You cannot put the dog back on the same day on the road. No, no, and, be and bells, I mean, whether the dog has bells on it or he doesn't, what prevents him from going to die in a Nali three kilometers away? When dogs want to die, like all animals, they go to dark places. Whether they have bells Hide. on or they have uh, something else, they go and die there. What prevents you? What prevents a dog from dying with, with bells on or bells off? So in and tomorrow you don't find the dog that you put bells on. What the hell are you going to do? But, uh, bells are not a preventive. Actually, we do survey at before and after also. And till today, we have 99% successful. If you are died, I know uh, that is uh, our mistake or something like that, but we have succeeded in 99%. You're just taking a chance. You wouldn't take that chance on yourself. Yeah, that's that's I don't, don't, that's that's I don't believe the 99%. I don't believe it. But we because your survey, that. wait a minute, your survey is done three days later. The dog can die up to one month later mm -hmm. because that's how long it takes for it to bleed to death. Yes, but uh, uh, we have some few feeders and volunteers and we make complaints before and after also we do uh, frequent Beta survey. Over just there. don't do it again. Let's not argue yeah, that's this. Right, yeah? that's right, that's right. Uh, thank you for uh, being your auspicious present in this program and I want to thank the organizer for letting us uh, put our few words up on there. We are also practicing some sorts of stabilization program. And uh, it has been the work of WBS, as you have told previously, they were out there in Sinuli and Budwal for some sorts of trading to the vets. And at that time, we got chance to involve with them. So they will not 
uh, we got chance to learn a lot of practices on the standard of doing the operation. And I was uh, uh, astonished to find out that we can get such kind of trainings that is also free of cost because we were searching for a channel to do that. And uh, I just have a query that uh, how can we got the resources as you were telling different kinds of standard and requirements were there and you do have made some uh, such kind of guidelines. My first question is how can we get access to that guidelines and what are the process that we can take our heads or other uh, practitioners to the WBS training stations? So the two answers today are simple. We've just given you the SOPs, they're free. You look at the um, um, Animal Welfare Board of India right now in 15 minutes, just download the SOPs and you will get that. Yeah, those are yours, those are free. Animal Welfare Board of India. We'll just circulate the link. We'll just give you the phone. I'll just give you the link. Right. And uh, you just download it and make it into a pamphlet. Secondly, WVS, if we they can come, we can send them to Nepal. Uh, we can ask Dogs Trust to you can ask Dogs Trust to underwrite it. Now, Dogs Trust has got a caveat. <coughs> they will pay them, but they will not pay them if your government or your municipality kills dogs. So if you are a no-kill country, they will pay. No, we, have, if, we have the written statement with our municipality that they will not kill a single dog. So and then they, they will pay. But if both things are going on simultaneously, they will not waste money. That, that has not been the case. We have not seen our municipality killing a dog for the last five years. That's good. Dog trust UK. But it's not just your municipality. You need to be a no-kill yeah, country. Around, yes, around Carbon Plants of District. I am not working in Carbon. It's right, 27 right. kilometers east from here. Thank you. Would you like to yeah. speak? I'm sorry. We've just actually helped this thing. Yeah. Uh, nothing uh, much to say, but uh, like uh, she said, uh, uh, they are uh, they uh, the past few. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> And uh, last time they did and uh, released uh, the same day. And I have been requesting uh, the people who are working like this, where you can use our uh, shelter, like um, uh, to operate the uh, dogs and uh, keep for for three four days. Like we have a technician, we have doctors, so they can use it as a, a co partner. Which shelter? SPC. Nepal. SPC Nepal. Yeah. And we have been doing uh, the uh, ABC program regularly uh, on regular basis like weekly and sometimes in 15 days we are doing it and uh, people who don't have that uh, kind of facility they can easily use that and they are we are not the only one organization in Kathmandu we are we are four or five organization who have that operation theater and the shelter so they can collaborate with them not only us so and uh, regarding the fund, uh, I think uh, the uh, the public, the people who are facing the uh, that they are see, seeing uh, the problem, the community dog problem, they had to raise the voice to their uh, ward office, the, to their municipality. So if they uh, get the pressure from public, they will definitely uh, uh, separate budget for the Spain program. Otherwise, the NGO no, it doesn't happen like that. If the public starts raising its voice, the, the government will start killing. So please don't encourage people to do pow 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 about too many dogs, too many no, dogs. No, we don't have that legal system to kill the. Uh, you do dogs. not have anything preventing it. It's not written in stone that they will not kill. But and the minute the public that, starts saying uh, we really have too many dogs, really please sterilize, the answer to it is not sterilization. The answer to it is killing. That is what Kerala is doing as we speak. Okay. So we are doing uh, with the local uh, government level uh, that they are giving us some budget. So uh, we are adding some amount, of the insufficient, uh, insufficient amount from our own pockets, from our own organization, and we are, we are doing it on regular basis. That is how we are working right now. Question: You also need to do, you also need to do a publicity. If you had billboards over the city saying sterilize your dog. For every dog on the street that you sterilize, some idiot Pomeranian is having 20 babies, <laughs> right? Of which 15 will find their way on the street sooner or later. So 
people who own foreign bred dogs often let them out during mating season. Ah, my dog, you know, I can't keep him at home. It's breeding season. Let him go and find a female. And then they, they impregnate somebody or they get impregnated. So the point is, we need to have billboards saying, be a responsible owner. Be a responsible Nepali owner. Sterilize your dog. Private owned dogs need to be sterilized as well. Yeah, and uh, another thing is like uh, we have to educate people. Like uh, we have to educate uh, the children, I think. The, uh, if we can educate the children about the animal welfare, I think the, it will last for another 50 years. If we uh, uh, educate the people like uh, uh, adult, adult one, it will not last. <laughs> it lasts only 10 years more or 20 years. But if we can uh, educate children, that children will educate his, his or her whole family. So the awareness is the most important thing in this, in this society right now, I think. How do you identify a sterilized dog on the road? We yeah. lost the... We are not sure. That's best the best way of doing that. There's no other way of doing it. See, but when you let a dog with a notched ear back on the road the same day, then that becomes septic. Yeah. The flies sit on it, lay eggs on it, and then the ear Become gets maggot. eaten up. That is how many, that's how you get maggot heads eaten up by maggots. You want to speak? Yeah. I do speak English, but I'm not. You speak whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, about Nepal, you speak in Nepali. Yeah. I, I really want to introduce myself. I have a rescue shelter. I have like almost 300 rescue dogs, calves and cats right now. It's already been nine years I'm doing this. Whatever you told me, it's, I'm, I never do like a mass ABC program. I just do like four or five dogs. I, I have isolation room where I bring the dogs, I do a blood test, and I do everything. First priority is m m for myself. There are lots of street dogs who get badly, badly abused by humans, like they put a acid, boiling waters, hot waters, yeah. yeah. There are too many animal cruelty in our country. And before I was not like, I never went in the field and I did so many things. Once I start loving them, I start doing all by myself. I'm all alone. I don't have a team. I don't have anyone. How lucky you are. Uh, yeah. I, it's, I, all, I do my, everything. My, I do feeding program. I do everything by myself. Start, slowly I start hiring a people. I sell my all property. I start doing everything. In my shelter, what I do, I don't do an ABC like Max program in like another organization, what they do in, over here. I just bring like four or five dogs. I keep them for like two, three days. I do a blood test in a private, I pay like a, in a private hospital, take the blood test. And, and I, after that only I do a ABC thing. And I just keep like at least nine days or 10 days over there. I want to make sure like everything's okay. And only, that's why my, in my shelter, like nobody, Maria. yeah. I have so many babies. I, call, I don't call them a dogs. I call my, them my own babies. That's why I call my shelter is a name like Sri. Re my full name is Sri Jana, and that's why I call my Sri Rescue Animal Nepal. And I don't do that kind of mistake. I love them them more than myself, and I don't do that kind of mistake. Sometimes we have we are humans. Still, uh, we do mistake. But I want to do in a mask, but I don't want to do like that kind of stupid things. I let's bring the dog and for the ABC program and do the that kind of stupid things. I I found before I'm doing this pro the the before I'm doing this thing. I yeah I, yeah I, I found a lot of people. Shijana, have, enough. Yeah. Yes. Let them I, ask the questions. Yeah. Ask questions. Yes. This is a training session. Yes. I will ask a question. It's more of like um, for this is for Miss Rajana. As we know, and everyone in this room, Miss Rajana is like the mother of the oh, dogs is. here, and every she has inspired so many. I don't want to cry, but you could let us know what you need from us to help you. And I'm thinking about putting together a volunteer uh, program where we could go in shelters because we hear complain. How come we don't answer the so phone? So she's crying and you're crying. I'm sorry. Why are we crying? No, no, no. But sorry. <laughs> but anyway. tell me so that we can join in. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, you, 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 we also need to support shelters. 
we can't just always blame shelters and organizations. Yeah. We we don't know the shoes that the to which which what she walks. Absolutely. So unless we are in her shoes, so why we don't you judge form her. a separate team? Exactly. Listen to me. What is needed in any form of animal welfare? Number one is money. Okay. There are times when Sri Jana, me, Gauri, any of us, we go mad thinking, Bhagwan, paisa bicho. We sell our own paintings. We hold fundraisers. I go and speak, and sometimes I even charge just ten thousand rupees. You know, so that I can help some shelter. It doesn't make any difference to me. But we do what it takes for money. But if we had, if we had a separate organization, whose only job was called fund for animal welfare, and you then got film stars to sing, dance, <coughs> you got painters to do something. The art community has helped people for animals huge, huge. Every film star has come one by one to be a chief guest. The singers come once a year to sing. We ask uh, Air India to fly them in free. Hmm? Everybody will join you. You make a fund for animal welfare. It's not aimed at Sri Jana. It's a fund. Tomorrow she will need you. Somebody else is setting up a new shelter. They will need you. You put. Are an aim of ten crore Nepali rupees. Let me see how you get there. Your job is to make uh, petitions to the government, to international organizations, industrialists. In exactly industrialists. That's right. A uh, social media. Ask for it per animal. If you can put together with your friends a fund, register the organization as Fund for Animal Welfare Nepal, <coughs> and then. <coughs> give money to different shelters as and when they need them but immediately <coughs> there is a the people who give money immediately are like god the people who make you work through hoops oh make a, a project and then talk to me and then we'll show it to our committee we'll take the money because we are beggars but in my mind i'll say marcha ugly janam mein kutta ban jao so make the fund. You want to help? Instead of crying, make the fund. And register it by next week. So is there any more question from the from the audience? Can I quickly summarize? Yes, please. So you strategize, that's first. You create a facility, that's second. Then you train your people, that's third. Your catchers, your doctors, your paravets, everybody has to be trained. You have to while strategizing, of course, I'll give the link. I'll sit here and I'll share the link of the SOP with whoever wants to take it. All right? If you can't find it yourself. <coughs> then catching has to be done without <coughs> equipment as much as possible. You don't need equipment. When you bring the dog in, first you deworm it. Keep it for a day, then surgery happens. After the surgery, post-operative care happens, during which time you are going to feed the dog. Try not giving it non-vegetarian food. Dogs can survive very well on vegetarian food. You don't have to kill more hens to keep the dog alive. That would make no sense. That would be <coughs> basically you zero animal. You go to the chicken rice method. And the chicken that you get are the leftovers of the chickens that are sold. So you will get the rubbish, the entrails, the feet, which you then the boil heads. with the rice. It's not nutritious at all. The dog is not getting high protein or anything like that. He's getting garbage plus rice. So the food that we give is a little bit of rice, a little bit of dalia, a little bit of dal, some soy chunks, the big soy chunks. Dahi. Boil it together. You can put a little bit of dahi or you know for for the sick dogs or the dogs that are fussy about eating. Put a little bit of chonka. In vegetable oil, you can put some cumin seeds and make a chonka of the khichdi so that it has a nice aroma, a little bit of salt and uh, with haldi of course you make it and the dogs eat it very nicely. So you don't need, for the fussy dogs you can put a little bit of curd, probably an egg also. A mashed, but yeah, boiled or, mashed egg. Yeah, boiled mashed, yeah, not kacha egg because that will have salmonella. But otherwise, no need to feed non-veg. Once you fed the dog, it's been discharged by the vet, or you have to keep records very systematically. Those records are also the performers of, of the records are in the SOP, which I'll give you right now. So keep records in that fashion. And then 
release the dog after notching the ear of course during the surgery and the ear should have healed if it's not healed the dog can't lick the ear remember so it will get maggot wound and then its entire face would be slowly slowly eaten up by maggot so and then do it in a particular defined area once you have done the dogs of that area whichever it could be this colony then declare it that this colony is now rabies free because at the discharge time you are also giving it an anti rabies shot now an anti rabies vaccine they say only lasts about you know has an effect of one year but that's actually uh, you know not true it lasts about 3 4 years so when you catch the dog it's about a year or two old and then you vaccinate it and another 3 years it gets a cover and an average lifespan of a street dog is 5 or 6 years so it's basically covered right But make sure that the vaccine comes from a cold chain there are many people who are selling vaccines who have not been at a fridge at all so what you're giving the dog is rubbish just water that is what is happening in kerala the kerala government stole all the fridges that were meant for cold chain vaccines so every vaccine was rubbish so all so the people water. who got beaten uh, bitten they then took water for rabies vaccine and, and then died. they died this year 18 people died only because the fridges had been stolen so make sure that when you pick up a rabies vaccine it has always been in a fridge take it directly from the distributor and maintain the cold chain have which is why in your operation theater also you will need some power backup because what if the surgery is going on and the light goes off see if this is a five star but how many times the light goes off and on you need power backup because the dogs you know body is opened up you cannot take a chance like that right so even if it's an inverter but have power backup so once you have declared an area rabies free and you put up posters and stuff over there encourage feeders to look after these dogs if there's a new dog that has come have it neutered immediately so that will be a matter of pride it will inspire other areas to also follow the same program right so point is also to do a survey How, what is the population of Kathmandu? It's roughly twenty-three uh, thousand inside the ring road. Uh, People or dogs? Do- dogs. So how can it be twenty-three thousand? You just tell me. What is the population of Kathmandu? People. Yes, five million. So five million. It's roughly one is two hundred, unless it's severely meat-eating, and you have one million butcher shops. Then it would be one is to eighty. now calculate uh, so this was the survey done by the hsi uh 4 years ago and uh, it showed that uh, the population is 23000 inside the ring road of kathmandu whatever i would put it closer to uh, 50000 if you're 5 million yeah because you are, you it's a meat eating country yes and uh, also there are like uh international organization which are also present here who are willing to provide guidance to us we learn from jaipur on how to do sterilization how to make tracks and survey the animals of the society and they uh, they are always open to this and uh, we don't what you need to do also is what we have done in india which is get the government to ban import of dogs you cannot afford any more We in India, it's working very well. Others, the Ukraine Airlines itself was bringing in, I think, about 50 dogs a day. Every breeder was using them. All these Swiss Pyrenees, Mountain Huskies, uh, Bakwas dogs, and yeah, Saint all the rubbish ones were coming in because people who have money now measure their status by their dogs. <laughs> so, what? So our first step was to stop the import of dogs. only those people can bring in dogs into nepal who are nepalese have been posted abroad and are coming back after 2 years with their pet yeah and they have to prove that that pet has been with them the second step that we have got is the banning of pet shops and breeders you need to stop that get the government you got a new government coming in make this part of your manifesto and ask them now they will say no no but poor people run the pet shops You are not shutting the pet shop down. The pet shop can still sell pet food. 
pet medicines, pet toys. It just cannot sell live animals. But get it done. There should be pride in keeping Nepalese dogs. You know, your local dogs. So that would solve the government's problem also, that there would be fewer street animals if people are picking them up from the street or taking them from the shelters and keeping them inside. Yes, since we're talking about the animals, the, one of the biggest problems of the metropolitan is also the cows. The, yes. male, the male ones, uh, they are left in the street. Even though we don't directly work with them, there are organizations working with the street uh, cows. So how is India and how these organizations there dealing with this certain sort of problem? No, no, we have something called a gaushala or a, a cow pow. And they go into those and it just takes them longer to die. So they go and they die because the money is usually stolen, the animals are badly fed, there is no consequences to an animal dying anywhere in the world. So therefore, if you keep it badly, who will say something? So there's a big hue and cry about saving uh, cows, saving cows, the sacred cow. But in actual fact, the male suffers everywhere. The answer to this is two things. One is, if you're going to continue to be a milk drinking country, which Nepal never was, never. Um, it, it adopted it only because India adopted it. Otherwise, Nepal was not milk drinking. China is still not milk drinking. You need to bring in tofu into a much, much more um, front face. By the distribution of tofu meat, the tofu milk, the same way as, as normal milk. How does China do it? Tofu milk is much cheaper than normal milk. But uh, anyway, the point is, if you're going to be a milk drinking country, then you will have males, unless you get the government to adopt a sex selection insemination drive, in which no males are born. If you can do that, unfortunately, the technology for this exists only in America. And America sells it at $4 per insemination, which is too expensive for any country, including India, including Nepal. But if you can find some kind of package deal that the government makes then and get the dairies to agree to it, then you will not have the problem of males. Our government uh, once uh, brought uh, six cements from Europe and uh, they invested a lot of money and it was 90% fair. Yeah. And they, they didn't even try to uh, get the money back here yeah. by themselves. They can they can try by themselves, no. But uh, no, the company has to come in and do it. You can't just buy the semen and then do it. You, the company has to come in and do it. So, when you get these uh, sex sorted semen sticks from abroad, from European countries, they have basically massively trade selected their cattle to become to give more milk, like. They do with poultry, uh, you know, normally a bird would give uh, 40 eggs in a year, but they trade select the birds in order to give, you know, one egg a year, uh, a day. So in the same way, they trade select the cattle also, and this is not great because it, that trade selection comes into your indigenous cattle as well. So what India has now done is in seven states, they've done trade selection. Uh, sorry, sex selected so, uh, semen is manufactured, which is much cheaper, and that technology can easily be brought into Nepal if you get your government to collaborate with the states wherever. For instance, it happens in Rishikesh in uh, Uttarakhand, which is an absolutely a but neighboring district. to be a government district. to govern thing on sex selection. That's so, the but you need to push it. That way, you won't have male cattle. Moreover, the uh, department which is looking after cattle, the dairy department, or the animal husbandry department, you have to tell them that dairies have to be held responsible for not letting out cattle on the road <laughs> and to keep them, whether they have to sell the milk for a higher price, that's fine. But it's their byproduct. It's an industrial byproduct of the dairy industry. So you have to start speaking that language rather than taking on all the cattle on onto NGOs and gaushalas and, and also please whatever. don't regard dairies as farmers. There are yeah. no farmers in the dairies. There yeah. are people who who have taken a loan from the bank to start a dairy a dairy industry. Industry. Industrial units they are setting up and they chuck out all the now tomorrow if you if somebody opens a paper mill 
and has a lot of pulp and ash and starts chucking it out on the road and says, oh, here's a penalty, we'll pick it up. Is, is that allowed? No, that person would be sent to jail, isn't it? So how come the dairy industry then chucks out all the cattle on the road and then... And the Yeah, and then it becomes the NGO's problem. That's not fair. It doesn't happen with any industry. And that will go on happening till you keep calling them farmers. This is the next block. So let's finish. Yeah. Any more questions? Otherwise, we're wrapping up. So thank you very much for your questions and for your answers and your views as well. So I'd like to request the volunteers to provide the certificates. And also, there is a session next to us. Yes. Thank you.